Hi girls, it's me. Well, you know it's me. Anyway, uh, this is my first time doing this where I'm actually making this type of video and putting it on YouTube, so I'm very excited. So I hope this works and I hope you get what you need out of these notes uh, as if I'm there even though I'm not there. So at this time, you should have a split screen because that's what I uh, directed the sub to do. I don't know who your sub is. But I want you to either have your notebooks out and ready to take notes, or you would have the slides that I gave you in OneNote and ready to take notes. And we're going to take notes on DNA, uh, what it is, what it's composed of, its structure, and its shape, and who discovered it. So pretty exciting. I'm very excited about talking about DNA and genetics and I think you guys are really going to enjoy these last uh, few weeks of biology. So let's go. So you should, oh, never mind. First of all, I forgot I wanted to talk about these objectives. So I always have learning objectives, learning objectives this week um, to dip for today will be that you can describe what genetic material is composed of, right? And look at this cool thing that I can do. Yeehaw! I can underline them as I'm talking about it right on it. How cool is that? Um, so we're going to learn what DNA is composed of, the genetic material. Uh, we're going to also be able to describe the structure and shape of DNA. And then we're going to be able to explain how information is organized in the DNA molecule. Okay, so let's move on to the second. All right, yay! So you should be on a slide that looks like this. Uh, it will be titled DNA, the genetic material. And what I'm going to do so that you have time, remember that you can pause this video at any time. If, if what you want to do is go ahead and pause me and not listen to me right now and write this information down, do that. And if you want to hear me talk first, I'm going to talk first and then just go to the next slide. So I'll, I'll leave it up to you. So you can pause me now, write the information down, and then restart. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about what's on this slide. So first of all, heredity, what is heredity? It's basically the passing of characteristics from parents to offspring. And how does this happen? It's your DNA. Uh, what is DNA? DNA is a nucleic acid right here, that word. You've heard that, deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, it's located in the nucleus of all of your cells. So every single one of your cells has DNA in it, except for a mature red blood cell. We said that in class. But what does it do? It stores and transmits heredity information in your body. You'll sometimes hear it called the blueprint of life. So now's the time you might want to pause, write down this information. If you've already paused me, I'm moving on to the next slide. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry that my face is blocking the one of the faces of the these beautiful girls, but DNA, it's the genetic material that holds the instructions for the processes of your life. You'll sometimes also hear these instructions referred to as the genetic code. OK, so understanding this, the reason I put this picture in the notes is pretty much unless you have an identical twin. OK. You share some, but not all traits with family members. So uh, identical twins have 99.5% like identical DNA as far as traits. Um, so just making that point. All right. So the important point to take away from this slide is that the instructions for the processes of an organism's life, everything, the way you look, the way you operate, how you grow, how you anything that you might be genetically predisposed to have, like yeah, you may have uh, muscle definition. Some people may have more than that and not even exercise. That's all coded for in your DNA. How you can tolerate milk or not tolerate milk, things you're allergic to or people that don't have allergies. All that is coded in your DNA. Okay, all right, next slide. Remember, you can pause me and not hear me talk, and then hear me talk. I miss you guys so much. All right, oh, I'm blocking Gregor Mendel, sad face, but you can see it on your slide. So we've talked about genes a lot, and you've heard 
you know, we've said genes and chromosomes and DNA. So this slide ties all of that together for you. Genes are basically segments that are on chromosomes. And the segments of genes are made of DNA. And you'll also, you've also probably heard the long word, deoxyribonucleic acid. I want you to say that. Deoxyribonucleic acid. And these segments, these genes, they code for a protein. And I'm not talking like a piece of chicken that you would eat. I'm talking about the proteins in your body that keep you going and keep you alive. You have proteins that help you digest food. You have proteins that help you sleep, blink, swallow, think, etc. So these proteins code for specific traits, whether it's external or internal. And some examples that I gave you in your notes here were skin tone and eye color. So genes determine what we look like outside and how we work inside our body. Pretty darn cool. And know that there is a gene for every protein your body has to make. So I want you to think of it like this. DNA makes genes. And genes are what makes chromosomes. Their own chromosomes, right? But to make a gene, it has to be DNA. And thank you, Gregor Mendel. Yes, thank you, Gregor Mendel. All you have done towards helping us with genetics. Next. Okay. So this is talking more about the, the uh, composition of DNA. So again, reminder that all of your cells in their nucleus, they contain nucleic acids. The two nucleic acids in your body are DNA and RNA. And what is a nucleic acid? It's basically just a long, long, long molecule. It's something called a macromolecule. That means big, macro. It's not micro, it's macro. It's really long. Uh, in fact, DNA is so long that uh, DNA out of all of your cells could go to the sun and back. I, I, I think it's like 5,000 times. It's a lot. So a nucleic acid is a long chain of these units called nucleotides. So it's kind of like building blocks. If you ever stacked blocks or Legos, each block, think of each block in DNA as a nucleotide. And it's easy to remember because nucleotides make nucleic acids and DNA is a type of nucleic acid. So a nucleotide has three parts. It has a sugar and in DNA that's deoxyribose like its name deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA sugar, it's a carbon based, uh, just like the sugar that you eat, like white sugar, uh, that is a carbon based. So it's made up of the sugar, a nitrogenous base, that means it contains the element nitrogen. And then there's a phosphate group. So the bases are all, the nitrogen bases are always attached to the sugar, okay? They're never attached to the phosphate, and that's gonna be really important when you have to color your uh, structure for homework, either homework or in class today. All right, so that's why you have these pictures, and I'm sorry my face is covering these pictures, but, ooh, I like purple, let's use purple. So this is the base, right? So this is one of the three parts, okay? This is the phosphate group. And this is a sugar. So a bunch of these nucleotides bond together with an element hydrogen, holds them together, called hydrogen bonds, and it makes this really long strand of DNA. Okay, next. Okay, so what is DNA shaped like? How's it structured? You already know that it's made of nucleotides and that they're all linked together with hydrogen bonds, but you've probably heard this, DNA is shaped like a spiral staircase. It's made of two parallel strands. So parallel means it runs side by side. If something's parallel, it's side by side. You should have learned that in math, and if not, you'll, you'll learn it, especially when you take uh, geometry. And you may already be in geometry, but two parallel strands of many linked nucleotides. And what happens is when they link, they're, 
bonded in such a way that it causes it to kind of turn, right, and spiral each other. So it looks like this. Okay, and know that DNA is not colored. That's just the way that the drawings look to give you a, a nice visual. But this spiral, so here's one strand over here, right? And then here's the other strand. And then these are the bases in the center. And then you have a backbone. This backbone is the, the blue part in this picture. And in the backbone are your sugars and your phosphates. Okay, so go, go moving on. Okay, so again, we're going to talk about nucleotides. Nucleotides, again, are the building blocks. And you can see down here that in your drawing, there's a nucleotide that where there's a square. And a nucleotide has three parts. In DNA, the, the sugar is deoxyribose. Then we have a phosphate group, right? So here's the phosphate, here's the sugar, and in the center are the bases. And there are four bases that make DNA. Um, we'll refer to them as A, T, C, and G. But A stands for adenine, T stands for thymine, C is cytosine, and G is guanine. So the phosphate group and the sugar, they bond together and they form what is called the backbone of DNA. And then the middle part that holds the two strands together are the nitrogen bases. And again, it's hydrogen bonds that holds them together. Uh, this is just a slide just to give you another visual. So I have a Lego drawing here of the Eiffel Tower. It really has nothing to do with DNA. Just showing you Legos. We all play with Legos, right? If not, you know somebody that played with Legos. So Legos can lock together and create a structure. And that is what nucleotides do to make DNA. So here's a nucleotide. I'm, I'm drawing a circle around, or kind of a square around it. And then here's the opposite side nucleotide on this side strand. And they're bonded together. You'll see these dotted lines, and I pointed to it and called them hydrogen bonds. That holds this two ring base, nitro nitrogenous base, to this other nitrogenous base. Here's your phosphate, and here's your sugar. Okay, and that builds DNA. Next. So let's give just a general definition of what is DNA. Every living organism's DNA is made of the same material, that is nucleotides. They all have sugars, phosphates, and A, T, C, and G. Even a flower, a bumblebee, a mosquito, a snake, a dog, a cat, us, everything. I'm having to get up and kind of move. This PD daddy is coming home and he's going to walk in and he makes Walk in, it's going to mess up my video, so I'm closing the door. Sorry, P. Daddy. He picked me up dinner, so I have to be really nice. Okay. So, what if we're all made of the same material? Why don't we look exactly alike? Right? Why don't? Why aren't we the same? If everything is made of, everybody's DNA is made of the same thing. Well, the order of those nitrogen bases the A, the T, the C, and the G is what makes organisms different. Okay. All right, so let's talk about those bases. Oh, you hear my door beep? That means B Daddy's walking in the house. Um, oh. Okay, I had to go talk to P Daddy. I asked him if he wanted to make a cameo in the video. And he said no. Okay, so let's talk about those, that one part of a nucleotide that we've referenced on a couple of slides, nitrogenous bases. So you'll see the four nitrogenous bases are adenine, which we'll uh, use a capital letter A to represent it, guanine, we'll use a capital letter G, thymine, cytosine, okay? And look at the drawing on the right. You'll see A, it has two rings, right? It's a two ring nitrogen base. That's its molecule structure. And it has an equal sign to a single ring, T. So A always pairs with T. Always think of at, right? At, 
at goes together. T goes with A, A pairs with T. They call that complementary base pairing because they fit together like puzzle pieces. It's always a two ring one to a one ring one. And then G, it's also a two ring like A, but it doesn't pair with A, okay? Um, it pairs with C, which is a one ring. The one rings can't pair together, so T will never be with anything but A, and G will never be with anything but C. And the two ring nitrogen bases are called purines, and the single ring, one ring, they're called pyrimidines. That's just some extra information. I'm not going to ask you or quiz you on that, but that's it. So A always pairs with T, and G always pairs with C. And in DNA, these are those middle parts that connect the two strands. These are the bases that are held together by hydrogen bonds. They are held together by hydrogen bonds. And I see that my face is blocking this. Uh, it says base pairs are all are held together by hydrogen bonds in between the bases. Okay. All right. So again, A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. So if I gave you one half of a DNA strand and I asked you to build the other half, so let's say I gave you the pattern A, G, G. So what would the strand on the right have to be or the other DNA strand? If I gave you one A, a G, and a G. So if I gave you A, a G, G. A always pairs with T, so we would pair that with a T. So this is my one strand of DNA, and this is my complementary strand of DNA. So A would always pair with T, so what would pair with G? C. Okay, so that this is the middle part. These are the nitrogen bases that make up the middle part of DNA. This, the order of these bases is what makes you look like you and you not look like a flower or a mosquito, right? Okay. Okay, so I've given you a flat DNA to draw. So I've given you one half of the strand. I've given you the left side of the strand, and, and you see we have our lovely phosphates here. Phosphate. And here's our sugar, which we know in DNA, it's deoxyribose. So there's deoxyribose, and remember that the bases, the nitrogen bases, always bond to a sugar. They'll never bond to a phosphate. So this is a single nucleotide right here. Look at that. There's a nucleotide. Nucleotide. All right, a nucleotide has those three parts, a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. So this is the complementary nucleotide to this one. So there's a phosphate, there's our sugar. What would this have to be? A always pairs with what? So what would this base be? Be a T, right? And T, uh, so if we have a T, we know that the base over here with it has to be A, C, and G. All right, and then with this C, what would it have to be paired with? G. Okay, good. So think of it like this. The A and T, think apple in a tree. Apple in a tree. And so those always are paired together. And then for C and G, to remember what goes together, think of C looks like a G, right? Or a G, uh, yeah, a C is a G with the missing part. So apple in a tree for A goes with T, and C looks like G, right? So they do. Okay. So this slide is where I want you to practice. So I've given you a single strand. This is the single strand pattern. We have T, T, A, T, G, A, G, A, G, T. So I want you to give me the complementary strand using those base pairing rules. You know that apple in a tree, a always pairs with T and vice versa. If I give you a T, that means you're going to pair it with an A. Doesn't matter the order. And C always pairs with G. And I gave you those rules right here. A equals T, C equals G. So using this strand right here, write the complementary base pairs below. Okay, so I'm going to give you a second.
Are you all writing those? Just kidding. All right. So here we go. So of course T will go. We pair that with an A. That A is going to pair with a T. That will go with that. So this is our one strand, and this is our other strand. What would go with the the G? A C. What would go with the A? A T. What would this strand be? A C. A T. A C. An A. All right. This is going to be in your homework. So remember, as long as you remember that A complements T, they fit together like puzzle pieces. A two ring A goes with a one ring T. Okay. And remember that a two ring G goes with a one ring C. All right. So this is our very last slide. Um, really important slide. You don't see this lovely lady right here get all the kudos that she should for what she did, but she's, she's starting to. They, they recognized her with the Nobel Prize after her death. Um, so who is this lovely lady? Well, she was a chemist who was working with x-rays and she was doing some research with Maurice Wilkins, which is not mentioned on this slide, but they were both in school together. They were in college and they were in London. Anyway, she was the very first person to ever take a picture of DNA. Without her, the two gentlemen below, James Watson and Francis Crick, they wouldn't have been able to do what they did. They, they were very helpful in what they did, too. So I'm not trying to discredit their work at all. Very important. All three of these scientists were very important, as well as so many others who discovered DNA in the first place, which your book talks about, but we're not covering in our notes. So Rosalind Franklin, she first took a picture of DNA using something called X-ray diffraction. And she made many contributions to DNA, its helper friend, RNA, which we'll talk about when I get back with you next week. And then also viruses. She did a lot of that. She actually died at an early age. Uh, she died in 1958. Uh, she had ovarian cancer, but it was due to all of her x-ray exposure because that was before we realized that you needed to cover parts of your body uh, and protect those organs. So but she did some great things while she was alive. Okay, and in the bottom, we have James Watson. So Watson and Crick, you might have heard of that before. So Francis Crick and James Watson, they were also uh, English, and they used her x-ray diffraction picture to put together the first 3D structure of DNA ever built. And they also are the ones that came up with the term, the double helix which DNA is often referred to because it looks like a spiral staircase. So you can see that on your slide. You can see how their structure is helical. And they also won a Nobel Prize for doing this in 1962. All right. So if there's anything you didn't understand from the notes, go back through this video. You know, rewind it to anything you need to uh, reiterate on. And if if it's still your questions still aren't answered, I want you to make some sort of note on your slide so that when I come back, I can answer them. What we Next week, what we'll do is we'll actually build a model, a paper model of DNA. Okay. All right. Love you guys. See you soon.